Hey, and welcome back to episode two of my series about designing branding. In today's episode, we're going to have a think about how to design a logo. Before you start working on your logo design, I want to flag up a few things that I think you should consider. So first up, you want to make sure that your logo works in black and white or in one color. The reason is that there will be instances where you might need to supply your logo for a print situation that will just be in one color and you want to make sure that your logo still looks really good. Next up, you want to think about does it work at different sizes? So if you make the logo really, really small, can you still read what it says? You want to check the legibility. Next, think about all the different use cases. So for example, you are going to need to make a logo that works on somewhere as small as an Instagram profile picture up to somewhere potentially as large as a pull-up banner or signage for a shop. Next, you want to check that there are no unintended meanings hidden in it. So this could be a symbol that you maybe haven't noticed. It could be a word that might mean something in a different language. Maybe it might be worth asking some friends and just seeing if they see anything untoward in your logo to make sure that you are covered. Now, before I start working in Adobe Illustrator, I always like to start with a pencil and paper. So I sketch out ideas. They don't have to be pretty, but it just gives you a sense of layout ideas. And then you can bring those sketches into Adobe Illustrator and use them as your starting point when you start creating the vector version of your logo. Now, once I've sketched out my ideas, I tend to head into looking for fonts. I like to go to Adobe Fonts because it has a really good filtering system. If you go to browse all in the top left hand corner, you can input the name of whatever it is you're designing. So I put in the cafe name Whisk. So it gives me a preview of all of the different fonts and it's as easy as clicking add fonts family and then you'll be able to use them in Adobe Illustrator. Now I brought my mood board into Adobe Illustrator and I've done a little bit of searching for fonts and I've picked a whole different selection so that I can play around with them, see which ones I think work, will work well. And I'm going to do a few little adjustments to the typeface to make it bespoke. And now I'm going to show you my favorite tools for doing those sorts of adjustments. So first up, let's start with the shape builder tool. So I drew this whisk shape with a whole load of different lines and squares. So I'm just going to go object expand. What I'm going to do is select all of this, this part of the whisk, and then I'm going to go over to the left and grab the shape builder tool. And then I'm just going to start adding this all together. So it makes it one shape rather than lots of different ones. And then I'm going to actually add this shape to the eye so it becomes part of the letter. So if I just bring this down and select both, and then again, I can just go over to the shape builder tool and I can just add those together. And so now we have this one united shape. Next up, the Pathfinder tool. So if you go to window, and Pathfinder, you'll come up with this tool, which gives you all sorts of things that you can do. I'm going to start off by heading to type and I'm going to create outlines. And then all I'm going to do is draw a shape that I want to subtract from the front. So let me just change the color so you can see it clearly. So it might be, for example, that actually I want to take a little bit off this W. So I'm just going to create the shape there and then I'm going to select the letter and that shape and then I'm going to minus and you'll see it's made it disappear. So I can do this in all different ways. It doesn't have to be using the pen tool. So it could be that I create a rectangle here and you can do some interesting things to the uh, font just by removing some aspects of it. Next up, we have the pencil tool and this is really great if you want to add extra embellishments. So let's start with the W and then I'm going to head over here and get the pencil tool. And if I double click it'll bring up the pencil tool option and I want to slide this up to smooth. I want to make sure that closed path when, when ends are within is checked and on 15 pixels and I'm going to bring this up to 20 pixels and click OK. And now it's as simple as getting your pencil tool and just drawing the added embellishment that you want to add on and it's going to do it for you. Now, obviously, this is going to take a little bit of playing around and getting it exactly how you want it, but it does a pretty amazing job. Next up, I want to show you how you can use rough and effect to create some sort of more hand drawn looking letters. If you want something that's a little less sort of harsh on the edges, you can get the direct selection tool and then you just grab these handles and it will change all of the corners for you. And you can see they're all curved now. 
if you want to be able to adjust just one of them then just double click and then it will just adjust that one curve so you'll see this one comes in but all of the others don't what i want to do for this one is i want to just have the outlines of the letters and then i'm going to give these a hand-drawn feel so what I'm going to do is I'm going to head to Effect and I'm going to go Distort and Transform and click on Roughen. Now obviously this is going to give me a really extreme result but I can play around with this and I can just get it so that it just gives it a slight rougher feel. Just bring the detail down slightly and then we kind of just have a slightly rougher version of our font which I think makes for something quite interesting and you could play around with the stroke and how thick it is and that is going to create all different effects for you. So I had a little play around creating different logo options. This is what I settled on as my final logo um, and I've also created a sub mark. I've saved this in all my different color options and there are four file types that I tend to save my logos in and that is JPEG, PNG, EPS and SVG. So there's a few different ways that we can do that. First up, if you head up to Window and Asset Export, this is a really quick and easy way that you can save a few different formats. I'm going to make sure that all of the logos are grouped and then it's as simple as dragging it over to the asset export box here. You can also just select the logo that you want to add and click this plus button. So once you have all of your logos in the asset export window, make sure that you select all of them and then click the file type that you want. So I'm going to go with PNG and then I'm going to click export. I'm then going to click on SVG and do the same thing again. Those are the only two file formats I would recommend doing with asset export. For your EPS and JPEG files, what I would recommend doing is going file, save as for your EPSs, save on your computer, click on EPS here and then choose use artboards and we're going to use all of the artboards and we're going to click save. Now with the JPEGs you aren't going to want these light versions because the JPEGs won't have a transparent background and so you won't be able to see anything in this file. But let's click on JPEG and then we'll use artboards and we'll click all. I'm going to choose CMYK and I want these to be for print so I'm going to go high 300 ppi and I'm going to click OK. So there you have it, a whistle stop tour into designing your logo using Adobe Illustrator. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. And don't forget to subscribe to Adobe Live and come back and check out episode three of my series where we will be choosing the supporting typography for our branding.